Welcome back everybody. This is the carry around. It's kind of an interesting gadget. It supposedly allows you to carry four drinks all at once, but does it really work? Let's find out in today's video. All right, this is gonna be a quick video. Um, I just really wanted to try this one out. It looked interesting to me. It arrived in my PO box. It's not a sponsored post, and I've never communicated with this company, so they have no idea I'm making this video. They, I guess they will after I post it. I've just got back from testing this out, but before I show you those, let me show you how this actually works. It folds down very compactly. You can fit in your back pocket and your purse. So you fold the handle out, and then if you wanna open it up, for four, you have to go to the right. One, two, three, and then you've got four there. Now I found instead of holding it up and putting cups in there, it's a little bit unbalanced. The easiest way to do it is to put this flat, put your cups in there, and then lift. They also have it set up for three, so instead of going to the right, you go to the left. One, two. Then you've got three cups that are balanced for as well. When you're done, fold it up, you're good to go. There's also something about this when it's in this fold configuration that it makes you want to do this to it. So if you get one, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I just spent a couple hours testing this thing out. Let's flash back and see how those tests went. I'm gonna head into this Starbucks. It's actually in a grocery store. I'm gonna get a tall, grande, venti, and trenta Starbucks drink and see how the carry around works. Now I like this Starbucks because it's inside of a grocery store. It's a little bit more mellow. It's not as busy. The other one nearby, it's always, a, it's a nightmare. So I'm just gonna go in there. Not to mention, I have to carry it all the way across this long parking lot to get back to my car. So I can get my first test right there. Here we go, I did it. I definitely have a few observations about this. Let me put this down first. All right, so it worked pretty well for all the sizes. I was able to carry all of them, although I think that if the, the large size kind of was weighing it down a little bit, it also kind of stuck up above the top a little bit. I don't think these really large drinks are as good for it as medium and smaller drinks are. The next issue is that carrying them is one thing. How about transporting them? You can't transport them in a car. Check this out. If I place them down at the bottom of the floor, it goes all the way down. They're just gonna be sitting there loose. I can't do that. So I'm gonna have to use one of these carriers uh, in the car. But what about when I get to my destination? I gotta go up some stairs, I gotta open the door. I might need a free hand. Carrying four drinks in these is always kind of treacherous. Let's do that and see how it works there. Now the problem with one of these drink carriers is that it's not really a, very good for two hands. I mean, you can do it, but it feels kind of treacherous. I have to fish in my pocket for my keys and open the door. There must be a better way, right? Let's try it again with the carry around. All right, so with the carry around, I can reach in my pocket, get my keys out. Got a free hand to open the front door. Even though the, he the big one's a little bit heavy, I think it still works. If you set it down, just grab your drinks, not bad. Next up, we're gonna try a few fountain drinks and see how those work. This time I'm gonna try three instead of four, and I'm gonna do two different sizes because the really large ones aren't very good in there. I'm gonna try their 20 ounce and 30 ounce, and see what happens. All right, here we go. Um, I got two 30 ounces and one 20 ounce. The 30s are, are a bit of a stretch. It's working, but it seems like it's it's kind of bowing a little bit. The 20 ounce seems perfect for this. You know, the, obviously the cup size is gonna make a difference, but to me, I think the 20 ounces are, are more ideal. They all work, but this is better. And once again, I'm in my car, so I have to use this instead of this to get home. Now how we go from this to this, uh, that is the question. It's a bit awkward, it's a bit awkward but I did it. Now we're ready to carry this inside. So in the end, I do think that there has, is a place for this. It may not be perfect for the car. I think the drink carriers still have a place there. I think it's really designed for something like a ball game where you're going to the overpriced vendor, you wanna order a bunch of drinks for your friends, go back to the your seats, and this is perfect. I don't really have any major issues with it. Only the thing I would say is that the larger cups don't fit as well in here. It's pretty simple and it serves a function. It's only 10 bucks. I actually like the carry around. Stick around for a quick Q&A and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. All right, because this video was so short, I figured I'd get to a few more questions I didn't get to last time. 
with a quick bonus Q&A. Let's get right to it. First up, Sean said it would be awesome if you would dive into local Vegas attractions and hidden food spots. Funny you should mention that I actually have a Vegas related themed video coming up soon. It's not a product review. It's kind of a comparison video. It's also probably the most expensive video I've ever made. So stay tuned for that in a couple weeks. Outdoors Joe asks, have you ever had a company contact you after a bad review? Yes, quite a few times. Sometimes they'll want me to redo it or sometimes they'll say they have a new version coming out. A lot of times I hear from inventors. Uh, inventors are so sold on their own products that they think there's no flaws whatsoever. So if I ever mention any flaws about a, a product that an inventor put out there, I hear from them. Now this person asks, has there ever been a video idea that you spent so much time on it, but it ended up being a complete failure? Failure on my end? Yes, there was one. I did a blender video. I probably spent 300 bucks on three different blenders. I got pretty far into that video and realized I didn't like the results, so I, I trashed it. Now, something that wasn't my fault, I recently spent weeks working on this portable AC unit review. I was very close to being finished with it. The manufacturer sent an email saying the product was recalled for it because it was a hazard. So I didn't really want to post that video, so I kind of wasted two weeks on that one. Nathan wants to know why I think there's such a fascination with ASEAN TV products and egg gadgets. Now, that's a great question, actually. I don't know the answer to that one. What I was thinking about is maybe that everybody makes eggs. Eggs is one of the staples of breakfast. And egg gadgets are pretty easy to make. Most of them are pretty simple. Even if they're not very functional, you can throw together this 50 cent piece of plastic, call an egg gadget, and sell it for 10 bucks. I just think there's a lot of profit in egg gadgets, even though most of them are not useful. John wants to know if I think the ASEAN TV products or the industry is dying. I, I don't know if it's dying. I think it's, it's in transition. What I think happened is in the 2010s, kind of where YouTube and social media kind of took over, ASEAN TV products came, became kind of a punchline. I mean, most people, when they did ASEAN TV products, they're goofing on them. I think a lot of them have kind of retooled some of the products from those companies aren't really billed as ASEAN TV anymore, like Granite Stone, that's an ASEAN TV company, but it's not really promoted like it. So I think the ASEAN TV industry is changing, but I don't think it's dying. This person asked what I think the best value I ever got in a product was, the best product for the least price. Now this may not be the answer you're looking for, but I would say the best value of a product that I didn't really review, but it's been in several videos of mine, were the dollar store ice cube trays. My dollar store ice cube trays, have, they're actually starting to get kind of old now and I probably have to replace them. But I've not found an ice cube tray, even these $30 ones that have outperformed my $1 ice cube trays. They make more ice, the ice comes out easier. I just think those are the, probably the best value of something I've included in any of my videos. Dr. Dingus wants to know if you can meet one of the ASEAN TV legends, living or dead, who would it be? That would be Ron Popeil. He was, he was one of the OG ASEAN TV guys. He kind of was one of the creators of the whole genre. I remember him as a kid with Mr. Microphone. I mean, the guy was a legend. I, I was so sad when he passed recently. There aren't really a lot of guys out there. I mean, Vince Offer will be, kind of fun to meet, but he's not in the same league as Bron Peel. No offense, Vince. Kind of a question out of the blue. This person asked, what's my favorite movie or TV show? My favorite TV show was Taxi, which ran from 1978 to 1982. My favorite character in that show is Christopher Lloyd's Reverend Jim. My favorite movie would be from 2010, Inception. Well, that's it. I've got to get out of here, but I appreciate you guys sticking around this long. I'll see you next time.